Hello. Um, I am so honored to have this chance to present some of the data standardization work that my colleagues have undertaken. We chose to present this on this project because it was challenging and we actually still have some outstanding mapping questions. Um, I love this, uh, this quote by Norma Lang. It's one of my favorites and it really encapsulates the reason for the work that I'm representing today. And I am presenting on behalf of a fantastic team of clinical and informatics experts um, who volunteer for this work. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the next few slides, but I did want you to have them for sort of a background context uh, to the mapping work under discussion. The problem, um, I think you uh, I think you probably recognize a lot of these impacts that uh, nursing generated uh, electronic health record data is uh, often largely unusable. That may be US uh, centric, but I think um, it's probably not only in the US. And I do want to highlight here the need for more patient centric data. Um, currently, electronic health records really kind of tend to be organization centric. And in our country, uh, a recent National Institutes of Health study of patients uh, asking what do they really need in electronic health records. Uh, one of the things they asked for was access to their medical information in plain language. Uh, and I think that's really important and it, I think it um, is very relevant to the work that we're doing here today. Uh, I also want to highlight the Nursing Knowledge Big Data Science Initiative. Uh, and in particular, Dr. Connie Delaney and Dr. Bonnie Westra at the University of Minnesota in the US, they convened, it, convened the initial group of about 40 clinical and informatics nurse leaders, uh, representing everything from academia, healthcare delivery systems, public health, professional nursing organizations, informatics organizations, uh, federal government agencies, healthcare information technology vendors, Healthcare IT consulting, uh, and I'm probably missing something, but many of these 40 uh, leaders um, were and are sort of the pioneers of nursing and nursing informatics. And a simpler version of this vision that we started with was very simply to make nursing data shareable and comparable. Uh, and we have, um, you know, a, a lot of um, uh, individualism with respect to how our organizations use electronic health records. Uh, and so we really wanted to tackle that. We just celebrated actually our 10th an, uh, annual conference. And I wanted to point out that you can access all uh, of the past conference proceedings on this website that's listed here. The first few years, the work groups really um, sort of did their own, decided their own priorities. But in 2017, we decided that we really needed to coalesce around a, a patient issue. And pain, of course, is a very common patient issue across all uh, aspects of care. Um, and in addition to the reasons listed there, um, it, pain, represent, pain control represents uh, a care quality um, uh, measure, delivery care, delivery quality measure, sorry, in the US. Uh, and it's also very important from uh, the opioid misuse perspective. And so um, that was really kind of the choice that we made. Um, this is a real busy slide. Uh, I'm not going to go over all the details of it, but um, I really want to highlight that the information and knowledge models that have been developed uh, uh, including pain, have been based on what nurses actually document. So uh, primarily in flow sheets, in primarily electronic health record flow sheets, and a significant amount of data analysis and cleansing has to occur before uh, value sets can even be mapped to the data standards. This is the pain information model. Um, this is a mind map view of it um, because that resonates with clinicians and we rely heavily on clinical subject matter experts to help us with some of these uh, questions that arise. But this aggregated metadata from electronic health records across eight sites uh, represents the care of about six and a half million patients. Uh, and what we tried to do is 
um, have in mind the uh, documentation burden and um, ways to decrease documentation burden. So in these models that we've developed, um, we're really trying to only include concepts that are critical uh, to patient care. So we started um, in the pain information model with 84 concepts, 14 panels, and about almost 600 value set items. And um, we, uh, in working uh, with our clinical subject matter experts, uh, we now have 30 concepts, four panels, and about a little less than 400 value set items. This is a good time to just sort of step back and talk about the US interoperability standards for nursing data. So um, the thing I really need to highlight here is that we use LOINC to code um, observations in the US. And, and that is not uh, the standard worldwide. Um, most countries use LOINC primarily for laboratory uh, results and much less for clinical observations, but um, we don't use the observable hierarchy and observable entity hierarchy at all. We use LOINC uh, in the US. So it's a big difference uh, from a lot of other countries. And I mean, some of this is obvious. Patient problems are mapped primarily to clinical findings, uh, sometimes situation with explicit context. Nursing interventions are typically map, uh, mapped to procedure hierarchy or regime therapy. Outcomes that are measures are mapped to LOINC. Um, if the outcome is an observed assessment or an assertion, then we map to um, uh, SNOMED CT. For assessment answers, uh, I just want to really clarify this. Um, when the answers are part of a standardized assessment scale or survey, they are very specific to that scale or survey and they need to be treated like a package. So um, we map those uh, questions and answers or assessment observations and answers uh, to LOINC in that instance. And if the answer is a measure like kilograms, centimeters, uh, millimeter, millimeters of uh, mercury, those two are mapped uh, to LOINC. But virtually every other answer to an assessment or question or an observation is mapped to SNOMED CT. And we um, map to findings, events, physical objects, occasionally morphologic uh, abnormality hierarchy, um, and we use qualifier values for things like sensations, colors, uh, shapes, frequency, status, um, and then of course, situation with explicit context when the answer is something like present or absent. So an example of that is uh, a patient problem that's present on admission. We have a number um, of uh, conditions that we ask about uh, or document uh, presence or absence when a patient is admitted to a US hospital. So I'm gonna talk a little bit now about the two value sets that um, frankly took us well over a year um, to analyze and, um, excuse me, uh, define. Um, the purpose of the alleviating factors value set, and in, it started out the pain alleviating factors value set, um, was to document from the patient's perspective, what are the things that make your pain better? Uh, and we got uh, about 40 answers out of those electronic health records uh, that were patient reported um, alleviating factors. And the mapping issues we ran into, um, ambigu ambiguity of terms was really um, a significant and still in some cases a significant issue. Um, we did work with clinical subject matter experts to better define the values and um, they also helped us understand the meaning uh, and the context around uh, those uh, value sets uh, or those specific answers um, and you know factors that patients report are all over the place uh, they represent mul multiple hierarchies uh, we have some that are at the more granular, granular level, some that are at uh, more of a categorical level, uh, and then the act of uh, values. So um, in some cases, it, it's simply the physiologic 
act of walking, the physiologic act of eating. Uh, and uh, those turned out to be uh, quite difficult for us to uh, map. We did work through multiple iterations um, of defining these terms to really define and capture the intent. And similarly with exacerbating factors, uh, we had about 40-ish uh, values here too. Uh, and we ran into the same mapping issues. I think in some cases, we actually had a little bit more difficulty with the pain exacerbating factors. Um, I mean, look at um, some of these values, if you can read them. Bending, for instance. Um, so what does bending mean? Does it mean bending a body part? Does it mean bending over at the waist? Uh, what, you know, what is the specific meaning of this term? Uh, and a similarly, change in weather. So does that mean a change in barometric pressure? Does it mean a change in humidity or temperature or wind speed? Uh, what, what sort of change of weather are we talking about? And uh, the answer was basically yes, all of those. <laughs> And then we actually found uh, an article um, that uh, specifically talked about change in weather as, um, uh, as a factor that can increase uh, patient's pain, uh, which you know, makes sense. Uh, but um, still, it's, it's quite difficult to map some of these items. And then we thought, is it important to code some of these values? I mean, do we... Do we need to map um, the, the shortened list that we came up with? Uh, and so we had to think about it from a patient perspective. Would this patient want the next clinician that they encounter to know what factors um, make their pain better, what factors make their pain worse? Uh, and of course, we had to answer that, yes, they are important. Um, and so for the values that we are still not quite, have not quite completed, we need to uh, document the use case and we need to document any literature support um, that we have um, before we can ask for uh, new uh, SNOMED CT codes. And then we also have this dawning realization that um, as we looked at these factors, um, these factors can alleviate or exacerbate other patient conditions, uh, dyspnea, nausea, and that list actually could go on and on. And so we're also trying to map in a way that really uh, will help support interoperability um, using fire. And so fire already has a condition um, and we can associate these exacerbating factors and the alleviating factors to pain or to nausea or to some other condition um, using fire um, to uh, uh, um, for the interoperability factors. Sorry. So we decided that we really needed to rethink um, what we were even calling these value sets. Um, I'm just trying to, uh, I think, give you uh, sort of a short, small slide to depict all of the decision-making, um, clarifications of assessment questions, um, of the values. Um, and, um, you know, we ended up saying, as I just mentioned, that we wanted to post-coordinate the questions uh, we wanted to make the, the questions more generic so that they could pertain to more conditions. Um, we spent uh, months defining the values or the answers. Um, we added and excluded, we excluded more than we added values to the value sets. Um, and then identifying the hierarchies for mapping uh, uh, took significant time because we kept we kept thinking about some of these values as procedures that weren't procedures. They were um, the, you know, the act of walking, not the procedure of ambulating the patient, not the finding. Um, and there's lots of different types of findings 
uh, pertaining to walking in SNOMED CT, but they weren't um, describing what the patient actually meant. And then we had to be a lot more um, mindful about documenting the rules and the decisions um, so that um, really they could be replicated uh, in other um, mapping work. Um, so we've tried to really keep up on documenting the heuristics and our learnings. And we haven't been able to map all of the values, um, but we, we have at least um, documented our outstanding questions. So we did require to uh, request two new LOINC observations or obser uh, LOINC terms. Uh, one is alleviating factors reported to indicate that it's uh, patient reported, could be caregiver reported on behalf of a patient as well, uh, and then exacerbating factors reported. And those should be published in the next version. I believe they are uh, ready to go. So I want to talk about um, the value sets now and what we um, uh, where we're sort of at with mapping. This is obviously a subset, but I wanted to give you some idea of uh, some examples of um, the questions that we still are asking about some of these values. And then uh, where we have been able to map is primarily procedures and uh, regi regime therapy. Uh, although exacerbating factors, I think we have a little bit more variety. Um, and then we, you know, we have uh, the issues that I mentioned before. Uh, what is actually meant uh, by ambulating is not the nurse or the caregiver uh, or the physical therapist um, uh, ambulating the patient as a procedure. It's really just the patient walking around. Uh, and so we're really having trouble trying to find a match in SNOMED CT for some of these patient reported uh, factors. Um, there's a few that uh, we were kind of surprised not to have found in SNOMED CT, um, uh, like, you know, being held, which maybe actually needs to uh, be, uh, have a little bit um, more refinement of the name. Uh, doula support, we still need to define a little bit. Is that the whole perinatal process or is it just during the birth process? Uh, and then meditation, meditation that the patient does themselves, uh, uh, herself or his, himself. And um, there is no concept that matches in, um, in SNOMED CT. So um, we still are doing some work on gathering evidence and refining the meanings. Um, and we expect that we will need to ask for some new SNOMED CT concepts. Similarly, with exacerbating factors, um, I think, you know, we did have one event here, uh, environmental stimulation that we knew was an exact match, um, but change in weather I already talked about a little bit, the act of breathing, uh, the act of eating, we also had not eating uh, as an exacerbating factor for pain that needs more definition uh, and needs some literature support. Um, so we've mapped about half the values uh, in these value sets. Uh, I showed you probably more values that are difficult to map and may in fact turn out to be unmappable um, and also may just turn out to not have sufficient use case or, or literature support. Um, and then I talked about heuristics. So uh, we did um, decide early on that if we could not clearly define values with the help of clinical subject matter experts, uh, the values will be discarded from the value set. Uh, and then, you know, we had to define where are we gonna map these values? Cause when we initially started, we thought they were all gonna be procedures or regime therapy. And of course, that turned out not to be the case. Um, so, um, and we had to uh, explicitly document the rule that we um, do not use observable entity. Uh, and because, you know, when people looked at um, 
observable entity, it sort of looked like it might be the answer, but it's really the question. And we've got the questions. And then in general, uh, these patient reported factors, we really are probably not going to use qualifiers uh, at this point, um, and we needed to document that so people weren't looking there. Uh, and, you know, obviously the heuristics, our intent is to um, is to reuse some of these heuristics um, on other projects uh, and, um, and maybe include them in our foundational heuristics. Uh, that's sort of our basic rules. Uh, and then, you know, explicitly talking about we're going to add values where it makes sense. Um, for instance, we do need to add um, values that were, are more uh, specifically related to nausea and dyspnea. And we don't want to put that whole example list into LOINC either until we've got a well-rounded uh, value set to look at. So our main outstanding issue is still how to map those patient reported values that are not procedures, they're not findings, um, they're just normal physiologic uh, states or actions like changing position or walking or eating. Uh, and our work group is actually hoping that you can help us with this question. Um, and speaking of our work group, um, I really wanna highlight the team that worked on these value sets um, to clean, analyze, uh, define, refine, uh, provide the clinical context, find support in the literature, uh, and document our learnings and our decisions, and then map the values that are, were mappable to SNOMED CT. So I'm going to um, thank uh, really the entire encoding modeling work group, um, because at some point, everyone on the work group did um, weigh in at least on some of um, the values. But in particular, I wanted to thank this smaller team of folks um, who did the, the heavy lifting. And in particular, Maria and Cinda Lynn, who uh, did really excellent uh, work and spent a lot of time on mapping and documenting the unmappables. Um, and this team was um, just amazing, and I look forward to working with them on the next project. Uh, I added a few references in here in case you're interested in learning a little bit more about uh, nursing knowledge, big data, uh, and some of the work that's been done. And I did include that um, website if you want to look at conference proceedings, uh, uh, if you're interested. Uh, and with that, um, I am done with my presentation, and I would love to hear people's questions. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, Teresa will now take some questions. Um, as a reminder for those of you in the room, please raise your hand, and I'll bring you the microphone. So are there any questions in the room? No, nope. none in the room, Teresa. So we've got a couple of minutes. Let me see if there's any online. Teresa, it looks like you're talking, but I couldn't, uh, we can't hear you. Okay, Teresa, there's a question online. So can you explain a little more about the value set validation process? Teresa, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Sorry. I'm... Oh, there we go. We got you. I forgot to, I forgot to press the right button. Um, yeah, and let me just let me just say that listening to yourself and hearing every um and every you know is um, well, it's uh, humbling. And you know is very Midwestern, so I am sorry about that. Um, the value set validation process was really a series of uh, uh, bringing in clinical SMEs, having terminologists ask them questions about what is the real meaning of this uh, value in the value set, and can you show us 
the literature that helps us to um, ensure that we are accurately representing the meaning. We hadn't really worked with patient reported data as much. Um, well, I shouldn't say that, but we hadn't worked on mapping patient reported data. And um, when the pain information model was created, uh, we didn't request that um, definitions of the values or even good definitions of the questions were uh, provided to us by the knowledge modeling work group. So we had, uh, we really had to go back to that work group multiple times to ask additional questions because often the answers they gave us were at best ambiguous. Uh, and what one of the things we had to grapple with is how nurses document. Nurses document um, as much as they can possibly fit into a single flow sheet row in order to save time documenting. But that makes it really difficult to tease out um, the, the various concepts that are included as well as uh, the meaning of the answers. So it, it was a 18 month process um, to go through these values. And we still have a few that have not been sufficiently defined. Okay, perfect. With that, we conclude our last session of the day. Um, to those of you online, there are no more sessions for you to join, but for those of you in person, there is a networking reception across the road. So I hope to see you all there. And if anyone Thanks has ideas, if anyone has ideas about those patient reported values and how to best map, please, please contact me. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Teresa.